Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Zed, and today we have another very special ranking video where we're going to be ranking all of the Anatolian factions in RTR Imperium Serectum. And once again, I am joined by the glorious Ahal. Welcome back, Ahal. Good to be here. This has been a lot of fun, and uh, it's definitely been interesting uh, hearing your takes and thinking strategy and makes you think of these factions in a different way and makes you generally excited to try them all out. Yeah, well, let's not say all of them. Oh. <laughs> but... yeah, maybe maybe not by Thinia. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Most most of them. Um, but yeah, we're going to be ranking them, guys, on their strength, their start, and also their unit roster. Of course, how good they're going to be mid to late game as well. We're not just going to say if they're a terrible start, it's a terrible faction. Um, although that's likely the case. But, um, <laughs> you know, some of these factions might have a good start, but not be very useful later down the line. Um, but yeah, we're going to be ranking them on that. And then, of course, like, you know, a little bit of how cool we we find them, their historical influence. But that is the least ranked as well. And if you are watching this video, guys, and you do enjoy these videos, what do they have to do, Ahal? They need to go to our developer uh, diaries discussion or developer diaries announcement channel. Click on the link and uh, engage in developer diaries discussion, posting their own um likes dislikes preferences and they can give their commentary and yeah just kind of like see where how everybody views these factions and maybe people have tried them and never have talked about them maybe people have never tried them but would be interested maybe people have like this secret hate for certain <laughs> factions it's good to talk about good to kind of see um everybody's points of view when it comes to different factions especially with all the different all the range of factions that we have in the mod it's good to see well, I was going to say like and subscribe, but um, we'll make a YouTuber oh, out like of you that. yet. <laughs> you can do that. <laughs> we'll make a YouTuber you out of you yet, mate. We'll make a YouTuber out of you yet. So, uh, yeah, like and subscribe, guys, <laughs> if you are enjoying this uh, this content. But we, uh, we'll get straight into it with uh, the old Crapadocia. And I think that's a solid U tier uh, for Crapadocia. No, I'm joking. Inside joke, guys. Inside joke. But yeah, Cappadocia, they aren't done yet, so I don't want to put them too high, but they aren't that bad, really. Are they? They're not that bad. Don't they get, did they get access to horse archers, or is that just me imagining things? Um, uh, I think they get Cappadocian, like, cavalry, which is like a heavy, heavy horse archer, but um, you made a good point. They're not done yet, and just for the sake of context, we're including the Cappadocians in this raking list because they are an anatolian faction they do have cappadocian religion they did get their characters remastered they did get um special regional and city traits they did get temple traits and ancillaries so they did get worked on but they did not get finished meaning their unit roster is not made yet and so we truly do not have a grasp on what they could be until then so what we rank the Cappadocians now won't be what their final ranking is. Kind of what the history are, kind of yeah. what the Tribali are. They are one of our incomplete factions because when we focus on a central, a, a certain area, um, it's hard to, there's certain fringe factions that could be this or that. And Cappadocia is one of them. They're Anatolian, but there's Iranian elements to them. So there's a lot of Eastern vibes and we don't have all that made yet. So they ended up not getting units. Um, and so that's kind of where they're, where they are. So officially they're incomplete, but for the sake of this video, this is for 0.6.5. Um, we will talk about how they are right now. If you want to play them. I, I, I mean, I would say straight down the middle, probably a B not, too many huge threats at the start but also not that interesting to play <laughs> probably um so you know and they start with a few settlements it's not like they are in a terrible position at the start it's just the fact that you know those units aren't redone so yeah uh, yeah i think it's pretty meh right so probably b but uh what do you think i would say c c um I'm happy to go with that because 
Yeah. Because, I'm... I mean, you got, you got Armenia, you got Pontus, you got Galatia, and you got Seleucids. All four of those factions are not trash. They don't have any trash factions. But, um, They have a couple rebel settlements. But also, here's the thing. They have a little bit of a spread out land. So, I mean, if they're fighting Armenia to the east and the Seleucids to the south, you're going to be pretty stretched thin. Um, yeah. I would say a C. Yep, fair enough. And um, like I say, uh, they're not done yet. So we're, we're going to bre- breeze over those guys a little bit quickly. Yeah. So on to the um, Silesians then. And as cool as they are, as painful as it is for me, for the men that, you know, uh, captured Julius Caesar, apparently, anyway, you know. Uh, how true that story really is we shall never know but um yeah i they're, they're not great are they really let's be honest <laughs> their roster's not amazing they get cool units but not good units and not effective units and uh you know there's a reason why i haven't done that thinoid clubman video yet guys because they're cool as hell but they're not good <laughs> like same with the silesians like they get the silesian pirates which are so cool and they look awesome but they're just not good <laughs> so their land as well that they start with is absolutely terrible and if you uh pop out as them you're going to start a war with the Seleucids. now i don't think the Seleucids will be able to do much against you because i think the ai will get a bit confused by the hills but and like then you're not really a priority to be honest to the Seleucids as well your three little settlements but you're just yeah you're in a weak position aren't you so i'm struggling to see them higher than a c but uh i will uh see what you think yeah so the silesians are actually um another incomplete faction um we didn't expect this to happen at the start when we included them but they have a handful of units to be added to them. But with that being said, even if they have a handful of units added to them and they have a complete... Um, the settlements that they get upon emergence are not the fertile plain settlements uh, like Tarsos and uh, Malos and the ones on the ocean. These are <laughs> the rough hills settlements. The, uh, technically, they're getting uh, the Asarian settlements which they were known as like brigands and raiders and mountain folk. And the Silesians were kind of related to them in this part of the region. And this is where the pirate hubs were because it was such an unruly land. It was just a area of um, inhospitable people who were very mean and uh, would (laughs) steal and kill without remorse. And they would band together and uh, they would just raid anything and anybody. And so, because of that their faction roster will be very similar to what that is which is basically just a a bunch of mobbing marauding pirate units some better than others but your economy i mean if you truly wanted a pirate style campaign great you would raid the cities and destroy them and destroy all the buildings but developing your cities are not that good so Remastered or not remastered, I would probably put them in a D. Okay. But I could, I could also see them in a C just because uh they'll be they'll be decent, but I think they're more of a D just because of where they start. Ooh. Riot in the comments right now. <laughs> but I accept that. I accept. I agree. <laughs> so uh yeah, on to the uh Chrysaurian League. And as cool as the Carrion Infantry is, and as good as the Carrion Infantry is, in my opinion, not the best faction of the Anatolians. Um, not the worst, definitely not the worst, but in quite a quite a um, difficult starting position, I think, for a lot of these emergent factions. A lot of the emergent factions, guys, when you look at them, they start on the edge of something. So they start against the sea. They start... Uh, at the bottom of Rome with a couple of rebel settlements around them for Taras. You know, Argos, even Argos, when you pop out as Argos, you have a lot of GCS settlements next to you. Like, a lot of these are on the edge somewhere 
that they have something to protect them one way so they can go the other way and push back rather than having to worry about everything around them. And I do admit the Chrysarians have one settlement on the coast, right? But their land is quite spread out and it's just like a little snake into the Ptolemaic and Seleucid land. So, you know, if you're playing on a hard difficulty, I think you're just going to get absolutely ruffle stomped by everyone. So, you know, I think these are a really difficult faction and also... You know, the, your roster's not huge. It's not amazing. There's there's a lot of AOR units in Anatolia, so we do need to bear that in mind. There's going to be a lot of AOR units around. But yeah, the carry and heavy infantry are really good, but you're only going to get them a little bit later when you've upgraded your city. So yeah, I, I mean, I personally am feeling C tier for these guys, but what do you think? I think there's an argument for B tier. Okay. Um... And they are kind of middle of the road. Here's the thing: the Carrions are the Chris, the the, the Chrysaurian League is just the best thing we have to represent the Carrion culture. Yeah. Um, there is no Carrion state, uh, unfortunately for Moslos. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> he, I knew it would be cool because he loves the Carrions so much, and it'd be cool to pay homage to a faction and. This is the best thing we got, and it was basically a loose confederation based on a religious center called Chrysaoria. So, mm. but with that being said, um, the Carrions were so heavily Hellenized that they were basically uh, Greeks. You couldn't tell the difference uh, as far as like their buildings and their architecture and some of their religious. Uh, temples and stuff and even their military um was very greek city-state structure mm. so you have hoplites you have your peltast your thurioforoi um so you're basically playing like a greek state but you get uh two infantry units that the greeks don't get and that's the light infantry and the heavy infantry which are armor piercing i believe because they have a that so I think the carrying light infantry get an axe, and the carrying heavy infantry get a drepanon, which was a very unique weapon for the area. Now, as far as starting, you you are absolutely correct. They do not start in uh, off first sight in a good situation because you're split between the Ptolemies and the Seleucids. However, let's not forget Rhodes is right to your south. Yeah, you can take Rhodes. Take revenge. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money coming in from Rhodes and AOR. You get Rhodian Hoplites and Rhodian Slingers. Hmm. So you get the best of both worlds in that you get Carrion Infantry, Rhodian for Carrion Infantry for offense, Rhodian Hoplites for defense, and Rhodian Slingers for missiles. The only thing you're really lacking is cavalry, but you do have a Zistophora unit that you can use. So I really do think that this is a B tier faction because you are so close to Rhodes. Um, I don't think it would be that difficult once you took Rhodes because even if the Seleucids and Ptolemies gobble you up on the mainland, you have replaced Rhodes as Rhodes. Yeah. Okay. I I see the argument and I'm going to accept it. And uh, let's put them in B. Let's put them in B. Um, and like I say, carrion infantry is pretty cool as well. So <laughs> armor piercing and, and pretty nice. So um, on to the uh, Lyceans then. And mm -hmm. I'm going to I'm gonna put my neck out here. And I am going to say that the Lyceans should be an S. And remember, guys, when we're ranking all of these factions, we are ranking them based on their culture group, right? So we're ranking all of these as Anatolian factions, you know? If we were ranking every single faction in the game, the Lycians aren't going to be an S alongside the Antigonids, the Ptolemies, Seleucids, and Rome. Like, it's not going to happen, but we're ranking them here based on their culture group. And something has to be an S. And I think it should be the Lycians. For one reason. For one reason and one reason only. And that is the Xanthians in whatever it was, about 400 BC, who fought the Persians and decided that they were going to lose, but they would fight them anyway. And when the Persians came marching up the hill to their city, they put all of their belongings, including their slaves, 
in the temple and burnt it to the ground and then fought them to the death. And if that is not the coolest story, but pretty horrific, but also very cool story that you've ever heard, then I don't know what is. Um, But yeah, no, seriously though, really, really good faction. You start like with a lot of cities all on the coast, all making loads of money, not bordering the Seleucids, I believe, just the Ptolemies, maybe the Antigonids at Kaunos, but maybe not. But um, yeah, and you've got loads of rich Ptolemaic settlements nearby, rife for the taking, all coastal. Um, in terms of your roster, not an amazing roster, but not awful either. So I don't know. I just think a really good faction and the history is very, very cool as well. But uh, what do you think? I'd have to agree, actually, if there was going to be an S faction. I was originally going to say A tier, but if you really think about it, they get, let's see, Telmesos, large town, Panara, large town, Tlos or Tlos, large town, Xanthos, large town, Patara, large town, Myra, large town, Lamyra, large town, Olympos, town, but then, um, and then Phacelus is uh, a Greek, yeah, that's a Greek, so you don't get Phacelus, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, eight cities, and all of them except for one are a large town, mm. and just about all of them have a port, yeah. So you are going to be making money, and then you're bordering a one region Antigonid, which that, I mean, once you take that out, um, you'll never have to really worry about them until late game. Uh, you have the Anatolians to the north as a CG. You have a rebel to the north as a CG. You have uh, the Ptolemies and Selj or Selge to your east. Yeah. And then you have roads to your southwest, which again, I mean, that would be even e an easier target as Lycians. And then you get the Rhodian Hoplites and Slingers, which again, like, gosh, add that to what you already have. You have um, you have a Lycian Hoplite, which is basically like a regular Hoplite. You have the Drepanophoroi, which um, are kind of like the Carrion Light Infantry, but big shield. Uh, you have the Lycian Marines, which yeah. are armor-piercing. Yeah. And then you have your own archer unit in the Lycian archers. So, yeah, I mean, if you wanted an easy beginner start in a very interesting area of the map, I would do the Lycians, and I can totally agree with you on being S tier. Yeah, and um, like you say, all of those settlements nearby are all pretty good. Nearly all got ports that you can conquer, all those ones under Selge. Selge, Selge. Um, and the Ptolemies are probably not going to respond to you because like they'll be too busy in the north fighting the Seleucids the north like sorry the middle of Anatolia but the north of the Ptolemaic land by Sardis they're going to be too they busy have, they have a full stack in Halicarnassos and in, in uh, which is near Car the Carrion lands mm. where Crest Ioria would spawn so you do have the potential of a one full stack but other than that one full stack there's no other like full stack potential in Anatolia from the Ptolemies. Their next, their the next closest one is all the way in Syria, mm. and it's uh, right next to a full stack of Seleucids. So even if they aren't fighting the Seleucids, that full stack would have a long ways to go before it reached you. Yeah, so you could probably, you could probably take out Ptolemaic presence in the area and have the Seleucids as your main rival. Mm. And I think um, there's a reason. There's a reason why these guys, when they pop out in your games, guys, if you if they pop out in your game, wait, fi like play fifty turns from when they pop out, toggle the fog of war on, and like ninety percent of the time they will be an absolute powerhouse in Anatolia by that point. And there's a reason because the land they start with is very good, and the Ptolemies don't have the infrastructure to respond so uh yeah i think definitely s tier but um i've waxed lyrical too much about the xanthians anyway so uh, we'll move on to um a city that in real life does not have the epic history of the lycians a city that in real life basically survived by being the gray man it's basically 1984 back then and um <laughs> they, they just survived 
by being a nobody. That is literally how they survived. Paphlagonia, I think we're both clear it's going in S and we don't need to talk about it. Moving on to Cell J. You know we're going to talk about it. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Yeah, you go you... ahead. I want to give you. I want you to give me your thoughts before I give you my thoughts. Well, Paphlagonia is one for the masochist, right? Paphlagonia is the perfect faction if you want to cause yourself pain because they have <laughs> the worst army, the worst land, and they are surrounded by the Galatians, which. As we know, guys, the Celts have unbelievably good rosters um, in the game currently. Um, the Seleucids, <laughs> who have two full stacks in the area. Um, and to your north is Pontic Pen... Uh, sorry, no, uh, Heraclea Pontica, which is not very rich at the start of the game. And you're just starting settlement, which you only start with one settlement. It might be one of the only factions in the whole game that only starts with one settlement. The only place you can recruit from at the start of the game is absolutely awful. It is it is terrible. And that's how they survived in real life. No one was interested enough to go and take the land because it was that bad. The city of Ganga was that bad. That is how they survived in real life. So... Obviously, if we were grading it like we've been grading all the others, it just has to be D. It's, it's probably the worst faction in the game. Not to mention your roster is is absolute dog shit. You're, what, what is in your roster? Just literally Asian light spearmen and, I don't know, what are they, Phrygian spearmen and stuff? Like, what? It's just, it's yeah. just useless. The only thing that's good is your Asian royal bodyguards, which it shouldn't really even have, which we might talk about. <laughs> but that is the only <laughs> thing that is good. And yeah, they're, they're just, they're, they're awful. It is an awful faction. It's got to go in D, but you might see it differently when we uh, when we show our ratings later on, because I love them. <laughs> <laughs> Way to spoil things. <laughs> um, okay, so from an objective point of view, yeah, I'd say being... Ganger. Paphlagonia, with Ganger as, as its only city, is a D tier, and it's probably the bottom D tier. Um, yeah. So, funnily enough, it's yet another faction that's incomplete. Um, there's a handful of units, albeit not that great units, that <laughs> need to be added to it just to ensure that it's a remastered faction, because it's got a couple units that aren't remastered. Um I have pressed Mausolus and Jorloff. It's like, okay, like, what what can they get? <laughs> uh, they get basically knockoff versions of Cappadocian units in the future. Um, and they're just kind of like, yeah, they're just kind of like this native Anatolian state slash culture that was so unimportant that it survived yeah so good to the good for them for not mattering enough um to be vanquished um so yeah i mean d tier for sure i it you forgot to mention that pontus is to the north oh yeah um so i mean we've seen you do two strategies one failed epically the other one had <laughs> success which i am sad that we didn't get to see a continuation of that because that was so fun to watch um, I still think you should do an updated challenge video on them, but, um, you know, there's so many challenge videos now, it doesn't have to happen. But I've always thought if you can make a beeline for Sinope and take Sinope and then take the other coastal Greek cities, there's two rebel cities to your um, west and then one to your east. And that's what, Greek I, that's what I did in the in first one, too. though. Yeah, but you ended up going back down in the... Gangra, and then you got caught up with Galatians, and then yeah, you didn't leave one of your you didn't leave one of your family members up north, and so they ended up all dying, and that's how you lost. So, um, <laughs> I think it's like you can do a similar strategy and still survive, even if Gangra. Because if you think about it, you could do AOR Greek units from Sinope, which arguably a Greek AOR is going to be better than your factional roster. Definitely. Um, so. Yeah, but I mean, not much else to be said. They're D tier. They're probably one of the cur one of the most cursed factions ever created in any mod ever. 
and um, that's what makes them amazing. That's what makes them appeal, and uh, mm. that's why Red did two challenge videos. It took them two challenge videos to get it right. Yeah, and then right was basically like scraping by by our fingernails. So, <laughs> so exactly. That's why I would love to keep seeing that happen because it's like, oh, I wonder if you were in a good position to make a couple different moves that could really make Paphlagonia the powerhouse. <laughs> <laughs> powerhouse Paphlagonia. Oh, yeah. well, um, yeah. Um, yeah. Amazingly interesting though. Do. Yeah. No, I'm not going to say anymore. <laughs> Let's move on to, uh, to Selge or Selge or the sludge as I will. Like. They are basically sludge. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Selge actually quite interesting. Like, Split start, right? So, yeah, interesting. But, again, roster isn't that powerful. And what are you really going to do, like, as them? Are you going to attack the Ptolemies? Are you going to risk that? Or are you going to go inland and take terrible, like, not really very good land? Or are you going to attack the Ptolemies and get rich land and probably get absolutely stomped on? Um, although, like we said with Lycia, that Ptolemaic land area, they're not, the, you know, they, they don't normally respond too well to that. So you're probably actually okay attacking the Ptolemies in there. But in terms of your roster and everything like that, it's not amazing. Your land isn't amazing. And I believe historically these guys were, like, they lived in hill forts, right? So it was very difficult no. to... No, not hill forts. No, I thought one of the cities was, like, right on a... It like through a valley on a hill, so it's really it difficult. It is through a valley on a hill, but it was a very prominent Hellenistic oh, okay. city. City, not hill fort. Then, yeah, um, but they weren't like barbarian at all. They were very, very. Um, they were a very powerful city state that would. They were never able to be conquered by Alexander, mm-hmm. and they were independent. Yeah. And they defeated Pergamon, I believe, um, in battle. And um, yeah, they were they were pretty interesting. Yeah, so, but I think in terms of the game, two settlements, split settlements, I've got to, I've got to say C tier. Like, that's, that's, that's what I'm feeling right now. So I would say C tier, but also you forgot to mention there, they are um, smack dab in the middle of two Anatolian CG cities. Yeah. So you have, and these aren't like easy takes, these are, these are two garrisons that are more powerful than yours. Yeah, and exactly. since it's part of the same faction, even though these represent independent states, um, they can gang up on you. And here's the other thing. Uh, you have another Anatolian CG settlement to the northwest representing the Isarians that has a huge garrison. So, I mean, knowing how Rome Total War AI, AI is, uh, the CG could defeat you. Um, alone mm. um, which really makes it tough because it's like yeah what do you do yeah um <laughs> well i'm you, actually you border... sorry sorry go you, on you, you border pednalissos which historically is your rival mm. okay so pednalissos and selge were hated rivals um, as were most city states that were like super next to each other and then cotena is right to your east if you can take Cotena somehow, you do get the Etenian Hoplites. Yeah, which are a pretty cool unit. Um, if you take the Isarian city, Isara, you get Isarian Marauders. If you take any of the Pamphylian cities, you get Pamphylian Heavy Javelin Men. You also get Pisidian Javelin Men, which are a little bit better than Akontistai. Um, and you also get Pisidian Thuriophoroi. I think you get Vistophoroi and you get the reform to get Espidophoroi. Other than that, you have like the regular Greek roster. But I'm going to say D tier because their army is worse than the two Anatolian cities ordering them individually, not alone combined. Yeah. Um, well, I, I was... think the move is to straight take on the Ptolemies and take yeah. as many of those Ptolemaic cities as you can. 
Yeah, that, I think that's the only thing you can really do, isn't it? Like going north is just the the spaces are too big. The the settlements are, you know, not rich enough. You just have to go south. And I was thinking, looking at the Silesians, like, ah, would do these guys go I ahead? Selge, I think Selge is a little bit better off than the Silesians. Okay. At least Selge has a really good city to start with and has yeah. one, two, three, four, five, uh, six large towns to conquer. I mean, if the Anatolian, well, one town, if the Anatolian CG stays put and isn't aggressive and you can kind of like fly under the radar with them, you have the coast to take and you can kind of become like a poor man's Lycian league. Mm. Um, but you're eventually, I believe the Anatolians are set to hate you in the diplomacy. So um, I think eventually you're, you're just going to have to fight them and defeat them somehow, some way. Um, honestly, now that we're looking at, I chalk this up, put it on the list. This is another challenge video for sure. <laughs> Ooh, well, yep. Uh, there's a lot on the list at the minute. So, <laughs> yeah. um, so should we move on to Pontus then? And again, another faction that is half done because they were an Iranian uh, ruling class over an Anatolian people. So a lot of their units are going to be Eastern style units, and they they have Eastern style units a lot of their roster. But you know, there's still some remastered units in there. But ah. Uh, but I don't want to play as Pontus. But no, um, I think it's they've got to be S, right? They've got to be S. Uh, right now, no. I say they're not, A. Yeah, okay, because they're not remastered. I mean... Even when they're remastered, I don't... I, I don't they, know, man. Do you not think they're more, they, po uh, more powerful than Lycia, though? At the start? No. Hmm. I, don't, I guess no. some of the land is pretty yeah. poor, but... If you can take the land, they don't. Pontus doesn't have a single port. Ah, uh, yeah, but the port's not far away. Just, just conquer a few settlements. <laughs> okay, let's let's compare. Start. Pontus has zero ports. Lycia has at least five. Yeah, probably like six, seven. So, um, Lycia has eight cities. One of them is a large, and one of them is a town. Pontus has one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven. They have seven, and I think they have two of them. There's one, there's two, seven. So they have one less than Lycia yeah. and two more towns than, than, or one more town than Lycia. Fair no enough. access to ports. Um, and their army is significantly worse at the start. Um, the reason Four I would say they're in... <laughs> um, <laughs> even then, like <clears throat> I would say they're eight tier because they could go directly for Sinope um, and take Sinope, um, and then yeah. and then you could take out Paphlagonia easily. Yep, and you can take out the coast. You could pretty much take that coast just like they did historically. You could expand along that coast. You could take out Trapezus, and you can have that Black Sea trade um, to where you can take on Cappadocia and Galatians. Yeah, um, I... And they're also easier because of the Hellenistic roster that they get via reform. So as you're conquering, you will get your reforms quicker, and um, you'll get some Therakotai, you'll get some Espidophoroi, You'll get um, the 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 Pike units, and you'll get a the Hetairoi unit as well. And then having all those Greek settlements along the coast, you'll have the Greek um, unit roster too. So you'll kind of have you'll kind of transform yourself into a Hellenistic nation from like a Cappadocian Eastern Iranian nation at the start. So that's why I say they're A tier because Cappadocians themselves, even when they're remastered, um, they're not going to have that capability. Yeah. So like the Cappadocians might be B tier in the future. Pontus would be S tier in the future. Yeah. I, I, I agree with that now. I think it's just because like they look so much bigger than the Lycians on the map, but they're they're just spread out settlements. Mazika is a very yeah, good settlement as well. So they're spread out. 
Yeah, Ma- Mazika does bear some mentioning because it is a fantastic settlement if you can get it up and running and trading. But um, for an inland settlement, you know, like we talked... Are talk- you mean a mafia? What's that? Are you meaning a mafia? No, I mean if you take Mazika off the... Uh, oh, you take Mazika. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, if you can take that from the... Uh, is it Cappadocians who own that at the start? Yeah, that's a Cappadocian capital. Yeah, if you can take that, then you can make some serious cash from that inland settlement. Um, but, yeah, no, I agree. I think Pontus A is is perfectly perfectly reasonable. Um, and, yeah, I think that's, I think that's everything. So... Apart from the uh, generic Anatolians, which are actually a bit of a menace. Out of all the cultural generics, I've got to say that Anatolians seem to be the most menacing, the most, the most striking when you don't when you don't want it to happen. <laughs> but um, I'm assuming we're putting them uh, just in the middle again, like we've done it done so far with everyone. Yeah, put them in the middle, and as we do that, I'm actually adjusting uh, my list oh cool because i kind of didn't think about the anatolians that much when i made my list i realized i like them just as much as i do all the other cgs (laughs) Um, but anyways now that that's done and i'll send that to you um so the anatolians yeah there's a reason for me to not like them though and we'll get to that on my preference but they have uh they have a conglomeration of peoples. So <clears throat> let's see what they got. Well, they have Tlos or Tlos, which the Lycians will get it when the Lycians emerge. But um, at game start, they were an independent city and they were known for defeating the Galatians. So Tlos represents the Lycians. Hmm. Um, right north of Tlos is Kibira, Kibira. They represent Pisidians. Yeah. Uh, that was a city state heavily Hellenized. Um, we already mentioned the two, the three settlements that surround Selge. Um, Pednalesos was another Pisidian city state, which, by the way, Selge, I said was Hellenistic. They are Anatolian as a faction, they are Pisidian, but they were very Hellenized. That's why they have yeah. a very Greek roster. Um, so, anyways, Pednalesos and Kotena are also very Hellenistic Anatolian Pisidians. Whereas Isara is the the marauding Isarians that I talked about, and the Cilicians yeah. get Isara at the beginning of the game when they play. Um, but after that, it's a temple state in Cilicia in Old or Old Bay. Mm. Um, that was just a temple state, and um, after that, it's a little town near the Galatians called Gordiu Cone, which basically means a Gordian village or village of Gordian. And um, from what we read, it was just a, it was a town uh, founded by brigands. So <laughs> we just kind of have like a brigand town there, which honestly could probably be part of the rebel faction. <laughs> yeah. But Tortuga, hey, why not? Give, give them the Anatolians. Um, so yeah, they, they're, they're interesting. For sure. There's a lot of interest there, but I do have a gripe about them that I will present to you when we get to our favorites. But for this case, I would say just like the other CGs, uh, B tier, just right in the middle. Right, guys, we're going to have a look now at our at our own choices but uh before we do guys make sure you do like and subscribe if you have enjoyed this video and all those challenge videos that we've been talking about you can check those out in the description down below as well but uh should we have a look at yours first or do you want to have a look at mine as always red you can go first okay well let's have a look at mine then so um we of course have the glorious crapadocia down on the bottom Terrible, terrible faction. Absolutely disgusting. Disgusting faction. Hate them so much. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm joking, guys. It's it's a meme. Um, Chrysauria, when it's when you have to explain that it's a meme, though, is it really a meme? So I've failed in my memeiness. But anyway, Chrysauria, yeah, not really a big fan of them. So down in C. Uh, yeah, d- a bit of a bit of a C. Uh, a bit of a sea faction, a bit of a snake, 
that's quite spread out and just to like from my perspective just doesn't look that fun <laughs> so yeah um of course anatoly is in the middle i've put all the generics in the middle for all of these cell j or selga <laughs> and b because i think they're kind of cool like the two little split cities with the ptolemies just below them and honestly whenever i see them be like the AI use them. They they always seem to survive. And I just have a little bit of respect for that, you know? There are two province minor, and they always just seem to survive. So, um, yeah, I got respect for that. Put respect on Seljay's name. So, yeah. Uh, Challenge video accepted, then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then Silesians, just because they captured Julius Caesar. And then, of course, mm -hmm. we have Pontus, which I think is quite a cool faction. Got a cool history as well. And... Quite an interesting start because although in the east it isn't quite done yet with uh, there's a lot of rebel settlements, but you can fight the Celts, the Gal Galatians, um, you can fight the Greeks, you can kind of choose which way to go. And you have, even though the roster's not done yet, you do have some cool units in there or some powerful units um, at least. And then we have the two big boys, the two, well, the small boy and the big boy. <laughs> yeah. We've got the Lycians. Honestly, love their history. When I did the um, the Emergent Factions video, I absolutely they were my favorite for the history by far. Like I really, really enjoyed learning about the history of Lycia um, and how it how it existed uh, for such a long time uh, into the Roman Empire as well. In fact, they uh, they um, they asked Rome to help them get rid of the Rhodians because the Rhodians were treating them they were basically like i think they, i can't remember, remember the exact quote but when they sent the letter they said something like this is not subservience and obedience this is downright slavery or something like that so a really um really interesting faction and a very good one as well but then we have a, an incredibly interesting faction but an absolutely terrible one we've got the ogs we've got the absolute boss man we've got the big bull up there we've got paphlagonia I mean, what else could it be that it's at the top? Like, literally no other faction. Absolutely amazing faction. Really, really difficult, but really, really cool. And just pain. Like, I love it. It's a really good faction because they're so interesting. And I, I just love the fact that they survived by being so useless and rubbish that no one even wanted to, like, conquer them. They're literally like, don't come and conquer us. We have nothing. We have nothing. Please don't come and conquer us. And everyone was like, okay, we'll take you up on that. We're not going to come and conquer you because you're that rubbish. Like, <laughs> when have the Romans ever turned down conquering someone and they turned down these guys for quite a while? So, uh, yeah. <laughs> like, right. Paphlagonia got to be uh got to be on the top there and um i think we're in agreement on that aren't we <laughs> yes so i'll start from the bottom as well yeah. cappadocia um again c tier because they're incomplete so i really don't have an opinion um i don't have like this mass hatred like you and mosca do for them um <laughs> obviously you know jk um silesians Again, I have them in B tier because they're they're just interesting as the pirates, but again, incomplete. So I don't really have a fully formed opinion on them. Chrysaoria and Lycia for me are the meh factions. Um, they're basically just knockoff Greeks in my opinion. Um, Selge is a little bit different because of their starting situation and um, just find them a little bit more interesting. But again, kind of like a knockoff Greek. I really would like to get those three factions to be a little bit more interesting, but there's just not a lot that we can do. Um, militarily, these factions uh, didn't do much. They were like confederations of city-states that didn't go to war, pretty much. I mean, yeah. maybe a little bit yeah. here and there, but nothing to where we have documented military information. So for me, it's just like they're just Greek factions with Anatolian culture. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I'll save the Anatolians for last. Okay. Paphlagonia, obviously, it's my favorite faction, kind of for the same reasons as you. They're just so obscure, um, so weak, so nothing. It's like, oh, just would love to see them dominate or would love to be 
a player and just dominate as them, knowing that you don't have much. And then Pontus, I've always liked Pontus. It's one of my favorite factions in Rome Total War. So I have them up there because I just like Pontus. If, out of all the big boys, Pontus is one of my favorites. Um, especially the Rome Total War colors that they had. Mm. Um, and they were kind of, a, they were like one of the first factions that I researched as a kid based on the obscurity of it. I've never heard of Pontus before. So it's like, what? What the heck? Where's this? Oh my God, nobody knows about that. And like, so I just <laughs> became a fan favorite of me. So now the Anatolians, and I originally had the Anatolians down at D, yeah. which most CGs I have an F. But as we were talking about it, I quickly moved them back up to S because they do have some really interesting people that they're representing. The reason I had D is because I don't like that we have an Anatolian culture. I don't like that we have an Anatolian cultural generic. The reasoning is there was no such thing as a homogenous Anatolian uh, culture or grouping like there is with Thracians, Greeks, Illyrians. Like it's a little easier for mm. you to come up with like a generic Greek, a generic Thracian, a generic Illyrian. But Anatolian is not that easy because the Carians and the Lycians could be and maybe the Pisidians are similar enough. But the Mycians, the Lydians, the Isaurians, the Silesians, the Cappadocians, the Paphlagonians, the Lycaonians, there's so many different cultures in Anatolia. And if we didn't have to be constricted to 255 factions, I would want multiple CGs. I would want a Lydian, a Carian, a Lycian, because there was no such thing as like an Anatolian culture. It's almost like a modern day uh, definition yeah. of grouping all of these cultures into one. Basically like Rome Total War saying that Britons, Gauls, Spanish, Dacians, Scythians, and Germans are all just barbarian. <laughs> um, there was differences and we can see even with the like Lycian character names, they had different names completely than Pisidians and Carians. So I'm not going to go on a rant, but just <laughs> wanted to be known that I do appreciate the Anatolians a lot. And that's why I put them at S because they're representing a lot. But if I had it my way, it would... um, slots that weren't so valuable for future updates, um, I would split the Anatolians up into probably I think they represent 12 cultures, 12 factions, just representing each one. Um, but that's just me. This is about our preferences, and that's just my my personal take on it. Yeah, I don't have any. Uh, I don't have any strong opinions on this, unlike some of the other ones. But uh, I do. I do. Um, I understand why you've got the Lycians down there because you think they're they're just Greeks. But yeah, no, I I, I really like them so. Um, that's the only one that I would be like, no, <laughs> but, uh, but the rest of it, I completely understand. And, um, yeah, in terms of the Anatolians though, like the cultural generics, I definitely do think they are more menacing than all the rest. Like the GCS is chill. The GCS just chilling, trying to live its life. Just having a good time on my minus 70,000 gold a turn just chilling <laughs> just not caring about the rest of the world with its whatever like 30 settlements or something and like probably about 100 units <laughs> more than that yeah. probably 200 units or something um but the anatolians they seem like they have they're just like a little needle just poking poking like bears and just seeing what happens like they just seem to like love just poking you when you're playing around them they're just like here's here's the player and here's a needle and i'm just gonna poke him and just see what happens so uh yeah no i, I kind of like that character of them i'm not gonna lie i don't know what's wrong with me but i kind of like that um but in the in general yeah good you good may ranking. not like the belgian challenge campaign no probably not I probably hate them at that point. And uh, at that point, I'm moving them from B into U. 
<laughs> which stands for you can fuck off Anatolians. <laughs> but anyway, I think I think we're done. But thank you, thank you, Ahal, once again. <laughs> um thank you no once problem. again for uh being part of these videos i've really really enjoyed this one this one has got me the most heated i don't know how how the anatolians <laughs> yeah i've got most animated on this one and i don't know how they like the anatolians are kind of the, the the most like under the radar factions but maybe that's why maybe that's right um yeah we got to talk about them all man we don't make these factions to just get dusty and forgotten about <laughs> yeah when it's the greeks it's gonna be chaos so <laughs> be ready folks we got we got one more of these to do grand finale yeah exactly um which i can't wait for that's gonna be really really fun um and that's probably gonna about be about five hours so uh, <laughs> yeah that'll be interesting <laughs> um but anyway uh we are going to end there guys once again big thank you to the channel members pascal zero and david if you want to join the channel guys you can do from as little as one dollar one euro one pound down below in the description um and make sure you do like and subscribe once again big thank you to a howl and we'll see you all again on the next video